Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training, access to our daily chat room filled with experienced traders, and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. We look forward to seeing you in the room. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Okay, nice to see you guys. Nice of you guys to join us. Uh, all our friends from Twitter, Facebook, uh, StockTwits, and obviously on this uh, YouTube platform. Uh, this update goes out once a week. Uh, for the general masses, obviously, we have the nightly video uh, every night uh, for our lovely members, right? Lovely members. Uh, hopefully everybody had a great uh, holiday start to their season. And now we're talking about the markets, right? So this is what's the, the best part about uh, trading for me, which is probably in the last decade, okay? Uh, a long time ago, um, I realized I could be theoretically wrong every single time, okay? Um, the one thing that traders have, and when you're trading both sides of the market, um, after a while, right? After a while, you really accept um, and really embrace your own process, whatever the process is. Uh, after a while, you are really comfortable in your own skin uh, and actually believe you can do this for a living, okay? Um, all, this takes a, you know, all this takes a good amount of time just to get all those ducks in a row and all those uh, stars to align. But after you get all that, you come to realize that our opinions, and I've said this now for years, mean absolutely nothing, okay? We can collect data and that's our job. We can collect data we can um, really assess the situation, assess the landscape, kind of gauge where the market sentiment is, bullish, bearish. Obviously, technical analysis has to be a guide. But until we get that valid confirmation, both long and short, our opinions are just that. They're, they're opinions, and they absolutely don't matter. And last week was a perfect example. So if you've been following uh, even this broadcast just for the last two months, again, we talked about the double, you know, double top, and we were literally sell bias now for about two and a half months, right? Like really two and a half months. And if you watched last week's video, okay, um, I was bearish going into this week. Again, what has changed? Okay, you can't you can't just turn around every single week and say, all right, this is the bottom, this is the bottom, this is the bottom, this is the bottom, this is the bottom. It's like doing the it's like doing the the rain dance in the desert. Eventually, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Yeah, eventually, it's going to rain. So. You, you need to always have a bias, okay? You always need to have a bias based on data you collect, okay? And I entered this week, again, sell mode, right? There was sell bias. Again, what was going to change going into this week that didn't change last week, that didn't change the week before that, or the week before that, before that, right? We are still in a macro bearish cycle, okay? We're still well below the 200-day moving average. So going into this week, what was going to change, okay? And the one thing that kept on saying, if you kind of go back to last week's video, um, the one thing I kept on talking about was the only way we're going to start forming any sort of a tradable bottom, the stocks have to go stop going down. I know it's a very simplistic kind of rationale, but that's what it was. The same news that was driving, or the same lack of news that was driving down the market, again, whether you call it news or lack of news, uh, the whole China-Trump saga that's been going on for now, for a long, long time, okay? Uh, whatever the news was, whether it was just basic gravity, okay, basic gravity or something out there, whatever the news was that was driving prices down, it needed to stop. And the one thing that we saw today, really, I mean, we saw Monday really early that the Bulls had an opportunity once again, okay, to play the same game over and over again. If you guys remember, for the last two months, all the Bulls kept on doing was every time they gapped them up into supply, they sold them off. I mean, that was literally the play every single day, uh, you know, every single day that the market gapped up into supply, they rolled over and started taking out lows again. And... Monday, the market could have done that once again. And again, guys, we're not tied into our opinion. We have a bias, right? We have a bias based on technicals, but we're not tied into our opinion. Again, nobody says you have to be bearish. You have to be bullish. Okay, you take data, you collect it, and wait for confirmation. Again, hard, you know, very sim simplistic in nature, but very, very hard to execute, especially for new traders. So we sat there, and Monday we gapped up. Okay, we gapped up on Monday. And again, they started to sell off. They started to sell off. They started to sell off. 
And then something started or so, something really started that we haven't seen anymore. The sellers got tired. Just as simple as that. The sellers got tired and we actually held on to our gains. The most important part of Monday's session was not that we had an up day in a bearish cycle. The most important part of Monday's session was, and it really set the tone for the rest of the week, was we reclaimed right over here. We reclaimed the five-day moving average. Okay, Now, why is the five-day moving average? Again, for all you guys who are joining us here for the first time, the five-day moving average is probably the most, excuse me, it's probably the least most appreciated okay, of all the supply and demand zones. Not too many people put a lot of stock in it. I used to, you know, used to be one of those people. I really didn't care. About 10, 12 years ago, I started seeing something really, really necessary with the five day. It really started to represent short term sentiment. And if you look at the charts, right, if you just look at the charts based on and, and the five days, this orange line, right, it's this orange line. If you just follow randomly and again, for all you new traders, you should really just kind of back test this. It'll take you five, 10 minutes. Draw the five minute, right? Put uh, incorporate the five minute moving average. It doesn't make a difference. SMA, EMA, whatever you want to use. If you notice every single time, again, this is why we're in a downtrend. Every single time we hit the five day, right? Five day, we faded. Five day, we faded, right? Five day we faded, five day we faded, five day we faded, five day we faded. Here, five day we faded, 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 faded. And what was great about Monday for the, for the bullish case was, for at least to give us kind of temporary relief, the bulls reclaimed the five day moving average. Okay, and I, we knew right there and then that again, if you believe that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, again, a cycle of buying was going to take place. And we quickly, we quickly changed our tune from. Well, this is just a dead cat bounce. So, well, wait a minute. Now we got some sort of technical clarity, you know, technical clarity that this could actually turn into a tradable rally. And we switched our gears pretty fast. I mean, really, really fast from like Monday afternoon. And we were in at least buy mode. Okay, we were in sell mode anymore. We were in buy mode. And again, if you look at the events, right? If you really look at the events uh, from this week, you can clearly see how important the test of that five day. They're reclaiming the five day. And then the next day, again, they try to sell off the market. Again, you can see how it just hugged the five day, right? Put in a higher low on the five day and started moving back up. And again, hit the 10 day moving average. And again, if you've been watching this broadcast for a long time, you know how important the 10 day moving average is. The 10 day moving average for me, if the five day is kind of a shift in sentiment, the 10 day for me is literally the birth of the trade. And once we reclaimed the next day, we would, you know, we were constantly tweeting about it step by step by step. If you follow uh, my Twitter account, you can just see it, this technical step by step by step. It's like it's like a puzzle. There's no there's no opinions. Once technical analysis, the ball goes into motion, it literally is steps. Okay, you can see stocks trading from supply to supply and demand to demand. And once we broke, once we broke the 10 day moving average, we were off. We were off. Now again, I don't think anybody could have predicted a five, 600 point rally. And again, thanks for uh, Chairman Powell, uh, really put a lot of uh, ease into statements uh, ahead of obviously the anticipated G20 meeting, but it really kind of cemented what the technicals were telling us both Monday and Tuesday. And we had this really, really big rally, okay? Really, really big rally uh, led by Boeing. I mean, Boeing had an incredibly big, you know, big, big move, but Everything that was kind of dead in the water, right? Like literally lifeless. You know, then the videos of the world, uh, lifeless, right? The videos, you know, Amazon couldn't get out of its way. All of a sudden got stronger. Google couldn't get out of its own way, got stronger. Even Apple popped its little head up, right? So we had a lot of names. Just The sellers were just really, really tired. And when the sellers, again, this is a very most basic thing, of kind of technical analysis. When the sellers are comfortable, okay, when the sellers are comfortable in a, in a level, whether it's a stock or a macro phase, whatever the case may be, that's when you know the bulls can, can seize control. And I, I, I personally think the most important part of the week was what happened the day after the Powell comments. And you can, you can just kind of see this going, tr transpiring day by day. The market rested, okay, the market absolutely did nothing the, the following day which was incredibly bullish, okay? Because again, um, the sellers basically said, look, we have nothing to sell. We have nothing to sell. We, if we didn't make sales up here, you know, up here or down here or down here or down here, we have nothing left. I mean, at this interval, we have absolutely nothing left. And I thought Thursday's session was really an important part. It kind of gave you a lot of hints towards Friday's activities. 
because we didn't go down. Like we didn't go down at all. The, the market, uh, the futures opened down. I think it was like 70, 80 handles on the Dow. Nothing. You know, you could see a pre-market. Amazon was down like, you know, the futures were down like 70, 80 handles on the Dow. Amazon was down like five. You know, usually you know, throughout this whole cycle, futures were down 70, 80 handles and Amazon would be down 15, 20, 25 points. So you see there was no selling pressure whatsoever. And instead of, you know, take profit taking on Thursday, right? We just had not, you know, we were green. Uh, we were green a lot of part of the day. And finally, we, we sold off a little bit towards the close. But you saw the, you know, the capabilities of what was going to happen next. And Friday's session, you know, turned out to be kind of a confirmation uh, that started way back on Monday. And I know it seems like, like such a short period of time, but think about how, from a trading aspect, from how much mental capital you burn from Monday all the way to Friday. So it really feels like in real time, like you've traded for like five years, but it's only been like five days. And Friday was just kind of a stamp of what technical analysis, what organic order flow, what collecting data, what not being, uh, what not being stubborn and just quickly sw switching sides. And now, again, if you look from the naked eye, okay, and you, again, you believe that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand and demand, again, we still have room on the queues to about 171, right? To about 171, uh, which is this supply zone here. Now, why is that going to be important or why is that a measured move? Again, look at the distance, right? Look at the, the stocks just, they don't stop randomly. This is not, again, I said, I use this, uh, uh, I use this example all the time. This isn't a cartoon that, you know, the Wiley Coyote drops an anvil on the roadrunner's head and it magically stops in midair and goes back up. Stocks trade from supply to supply, okay? So the queues do have a measured move to the, roughly this 171 area this week. So again, going into this week, again, my bias is, well, we're bullish because again, technicals tell us we're bullish until we hit the 171 level. Now, why is this supply zone important? Again, if you follow uh, just from the basic, you know, I, I always tell this to new traders, you don't need a lot of, um, you don't need a lot of experience with charts. You have to start out with the basics. And the most basic study you have is the eyeball test. So if you follow this line, right, if you follow the supply zone, every single time it hit, it hit the supply zone, we faded. We hit the supply zone, we faded. So if we hit the supply zone, this 171 area, at least you have a battle plan. At least you have a course of action to understand, hey, if we get rejected off this supply, we could turn around because, again, at the end of the day, this isn't the bottom. OK, we won't know this is the bottom until a long, long time from now. OK, you don't you know, bottoms are just not made in four day cycles. Again, if you look where we are from the macro point of view, we are still way under supply. OK, so don't get it twisted with the W bottoms and the V bottoms, whatever, whatever bottom you want to call. It, OK. Bottoms are made over time. They're not made over four day, way oversold conditions going into, by the way, a big macro event, which is the G20. OK, so we're not out of the woods yet. OK, but from the point of technical analysis, at least the bulls, you know, going into this week, again, Monday, Tuesday, and again, maybe we could hit this on Monday, maybe we could hit this on Tuesday, whatever the case may be. But I do anticipate a move playing out to this 171 level and then obviously uh, we're going to see who has control uh, of that uh, of that major supply zone. We'll see that very, very quickly. Uh, but until then, again, guys, remember, keep this always in mind. I always play devil's advocate. We still are under supply. For the bulls to really seize control, we need at least a close above the 50-day moving average, which is roughly around the 173 level. We're at 169 right now. So don't think for a second this is the bottom. Okay, the bottom will let you know technically. And for us to have a swinging shot to really aggressively rallying uh, into the first quarter, okay, we're going to need to reclaim uh, this 50-day moving average, which is roughly around 173 on a close. And then you see, you know, you can see upward bias, 176, 177. And once we break 177, then you have a whole move all the way up here to 181. And obviously, uh, you have a potential to go back to uh, all-time highs. But again, uh, instead of putting the cart in front of the horse and hoping and praying, we trade what's in front of us, guys. Again, it's so important, especially in your development, not to forecast, not to predict. OK, our opinions, again, means nothing. Absolutely nothing. Everybody has an opinion. Uh, it's great. It's great for water cooler talk. It's great for conversation. But again, does it make really a difference if I'm bullish or bearish until the price action confirms what we're doing? It doesn't make a difference. So. Going into this week, uh, I am, at least to start the week, uh, I am bullish, okay? Uh, obviously, that 171 level for all you guys who are joining us just for 
uh, the first time that are not part of the live webinar or any part of our community, uh, that level for this week is going to be very, very important. The test, uh, we're either going to get rejected off 71 or we will reclaim 71, but that will be kind of a lion uh, in the sand uh, to the upside. Uh, again, big moves, right? Big, big moves for, for all the indexes, 5% moves uh, all across the board. Really big. Okay, really, really big. Uh, the one thing, again, Again, not to, I'm not a you know, I'm not De uh, Debbie Downer, but again, it's just reality. I play devil's advocate. Uh, every bearish cycle, again, this is what it is. Okay, uh, every bearish cycle has an incredibly aggressive bullish tendencies, and that's all we're seeing now. Uh, just the way, the same way we saw it up here, right? Just the same way we saw it uh, back towards the end of October. We had this big, big run rolled over. So there's nothing changes, nothing will materialistically change until we reclaim. Uh, supply. Uh, pretty solid week. Yeah, pretty solid week indeed. Uh, a lot of big moves. Um, a lot of big moves as well, uh, all across the board. Again, the first two days of the week, I think I could speak for a lot of traders. <clears throat> Nobody was really a hundred percent gun ho. Let's buy stocks, buy stocks, buy stocks. Again, we've seen this movie for two months. Okay, uh, so there was a little hesitation in putting on positions, putting on size. Um, letting the stock run a little bit more than you'd want to, especially in a bearish scenario, because again, everybody has trust issues. We're, you know, we're human beings, but slowly as we've seen, uh, as we've seen time and time again, once you start getting comfortable, okay, you can see the rest of the week played out pretty decently. Uh, Friday, a uh, pretty solid session. We had some, some good pivots here. Uh, let's talk about it. For all you guys who are uh, trading pivots or considering trading pivots. And again, if you're stuck in this, uh, cycle, you know, if you've been trading two, three years and you're really not getting anywhere, okay, uh, whether you're trading small caps or you're trading some other way, right? Again, I'm not saying my process is the best, it's the end all be all, but it's it's incredibly comfortable for me. Uh, it's it's done very, very well, especially everybody will testify to put their hand on the Bible of God, uh, how potent it really is for all our people in our live webinar. <clears throat> but uh, if you are stuck, I'm, I'm telling you guys, consider trading these pivots. Uh, you know, I've come across these things about six years ago by accident, uh, and this was after two weeks of not making any money. Okay, I just couldn't get anything going. And once I found this 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 really very specific arbitrage, um, very specific edge that turned into the PS60 process, um, it took me a very very long time to kind of you know put myself in a situation that says, well, wait a minute, if, I, if it's not working anymore, what I've been doing for years and years and years, there has to be a better way. And these pivots have been really, really good. I mean, I've been demonstrating uh, the live price action on all social media platforms for a long time, I mean, almost six years now. And for all you guys are just missing that piece, I'm telling you, if you check out these pivots, um, you'll, you'll like it. You'll, you'll, definitely, uh, you'll definitely get an incredibly different point of view uh, from intraday trading, okay, uh, and it is incredibly effective, okay. So uh, let's talk about Friday session uh, again. Big rally into the close. Um, again, kind of stamp the week. Uh, I only traded several names on Friday, but again, a as we say all the time, you don't need, you really don't need a lot, especially when you're trading beta. Again, again, I only watch ten stocks. I mean, realistically, uh, majority of my my week is watching ten stocks: Nvidia, Netflix, Tesla, Amazon, Google. Uh, Apple, Roku, uh, Netflix, Boeing, Swear, uh, you know, Baidu, Tulo, stuff like that. Uh, I, I, so I, I, I trade the same names because I, I know how they trade and tendencies, the Facebooks of the world, the Alibabas of the world, which I, I don't love anymore. They're just not the easiest traders anymore. Uh, but again, it's the same principle to everything else. And I say this all the time. You don't need many, uh, many moves on these things to capture a day. And if you ca if you're watching these things, uh, every single day, you kind of know their their tendencies, and uh, Friday really you know really took off. So uh, the first pivot of the day was just in the video, and uh, I tweeted this out. And if you go if you go through, and I, I really welcome everybody, especially the new traders. It's not going to cost you a penny if you back test just my Twitter account. Like literally, if you just back test my Twitter account of all the, you know showing all these pivots, you'll see on your own time why these things triggered where they did. And once they started building, they really went aggressively. So uh, the first pivot of the day, uh, NVIDIA 158 is supply, uh, rejected early and needs to reclaim and build. Now, again, um, I kind of tweeted this out. Uh, I kind of tweeted this out right over here. And you can see this, uh, you know, you, you can see this. And this is where I say you should really back test. Uh, you should really back test, uh, you know, back test these pivots. So here was supply, right? Here was the supply in the 158 level. Uh, once it broke and once it started building, just an absolutely huge move. Uh, you know, the video ran up 
uh, went right up to like 60, you know, 63 and a half, just a very, very big move. Uh, Workday, uh, same thing here. Workday, we talked about um, 161 is the pre-market highs. Uh, it needs to build the spike. Again, here's the 161. Sometimes you don't need to overthink. Sometimes the most basic thing is right in front of you. You're just not seeing it. And a lot of these earnings plays, uh, these opening range pre-market high breaks, pretty effective. Uh, again, there's nothing to do with my process. You could just you know look at any earnings play, whether it's an opening range high or opening range low. Um, I like to. I, I personally prefer. Uh, I personally prefer the confirmation on the pre-market highs, the pre-market lows. That's my personal preference. You can obviously do it opening range highs uh, in in mid morning. Okay, as that as well. But it's it's one of the most basic setups you can have. Okay, and I don't care what type of strategy you trade, but this is really really basic. Okay, and uh, for all you guys who are looking for an aggressive opening. Uh, opening range play, you know, the opening range highs do work really well. So uh, we talked about this uh, 161 pre-market highs needs to build. So here's the candle 161. And uh, I traded this thing for like a dollar and change because I really never traded Workday. Again, I'm, I pretty much stick to what I know. Um, so I traded this thing. Uh, I sold it at that point within like 20, 30 cents of the highs. It came back in and then, you know, came back into like the 161 70s level. And then for the rest of the day, it just exploded. I really didn't care after the opening range print, but uh, that was pretty good. Uh, Tesla was my biggest. Uh, Tesla was my biggest play of the day. Uh, at, at this point, uh, the stock already made its moves. Uh, we actually, I actually, my my first long of the day on Tesla came at three forty five, and I I posted a pivot on social media at three forty and a half, and I'll explain that as well. But we took the initial trade we took on Tesla was right over here. So we, we, what I liked about the Tesla setup was, number one, when you looked at the macro view, right, it tested the bottom of the channel of the 60-minute chart, uh, you know, kind of mid-morning. And the reason why that was important, if you correlate that, okay, if you correlate that into the rising support, it tested successfully, right, the rising support on the daily chart. So I knew it held, okay. Now the question was, as it was getting stronger, where the hell do we buy this thing, right? Where the hell do we buy this thing? And we looked at this chart, right? We looked at this chart and there was so many supply zones. If all you guys remember in the live webinar, I kept on saying at 342, where the hell do we buy it? At 343, where the hell do we buy it? And the reason why I kept saying that is look at all these lines, right? Look at all these lines, right? These lines are supply zones. And the most important part is you need these supply zones to kind of go away, right? They, they kind of need to confirm. And the first site of line of sight that I saw to the goal line was somewhere around this 344 and a half level. This was like the last supply right here, 344 and a half. And I said, if it could reclaim that 345 and a half, it could go. I mean, it could really, really go. So it just exploded. It really, really exploded. Uh, I bought it at 345 and I sold it perfectly. I mean, literally perfectly within the first candle into supply. Like this is, you see this first candle here? It, it, just, it was just like a perfect, perfect trade. And I sold it within like 20, 30 cents. I think my hot, I, I think it traded to like 47, like 47, 30, something like that. And that first move, my last sale was at 347 from 345. So it doesn't seem like a big, big move, but that was a really, I mean, considering where it came from, it was a pretty big move. And then I kind of tweeted out, once it started making a base, uh, I tweeted this out at three, you know, 348 and a half. And I said, look, if this thing could confirm, this is a 60 minute view. If this thing confirmed the 348 and a half, this is already another, this is like an hour later, right? This is already an hour later. If this thing can confirm 348 and a half, and again, this is pretty basic. There's no supply zones here. This is basically confirming the previous candle. Now, again, before somebody turns around and say, well, what's the big deal about, you know, the, you know, the PS60 theory, all it is doing is, is confirming the pre, you know, the candle. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's confirming the pre candle. If there's no supply around, there's a million lines, as you can see usually around some of these trades and we call these, you know, the sneaky pivots. This just happened to be a very, very clean pivot because there was no supply zones anywhere. Matter of fact, if you look at Tesla's daily chart, you can see the next supply zone just from the daily zone is all the way up to 353, excuse me, all the way up to 358. And if you look at the 60 minute, right, you can see the 353. So yeah, it was basic back then because there was nothing above it. But usually, look, you know, it's, it's, it takes really a lot of moving parts to really get a good sneaky pivot. And then one thing I've been de demonstrating for many, many years is the sneaky pivot. That's the meat of the trade. Uh, but in this, you know, in this instance, this just turned out to be uh, a pretty, 
you know, pretty clean pivot. And it went from uh, 358 and a half. Again, as you can see here, I tweeted this out, 358 and a half, uh, 348 and a half. And you can just see this move, right? You can just see that first move going from 348 and a half, uh, you know, put up a $3 candle pretty quickly. So a uh, pretty aggressive day uh, to end a pretty aggressive week. And now, you know, going into this week, as you can see, a lot of these, you know, a lot of these charts still have room to go higher. Um, you know, this is going to be a pretty interesting week for the Bulls uh, to see if they can, number one, challenge, um, if they could challenge the top of supply here on the macro move on the Qs, that's number one. And if they do challenge that, right, if they do challenge that 171 level, what happens next, right? What happens next? Because again, if you saw the last several times it challenged this level, right? They hit the level and reverse down. Hit this level, reverse down. So for all you guys who are, who are at home, who are not trading with us, just put that 171 on your radar because it, it, it's going to be do or die at that situation. If we could close above it, it's due. If we could close below it, well, you know what's going to happen next. So guys, have an excellent, excellent weekend. Enjoy your life. Uh, for all you guys who are interested uh, in the live webinar, again, we meet Monday through uh, Friday, okay? Uh, I speak for seven hours a day. I share my screen. I share all my executions. There's nobody trying to, to, to hide or trick anybody. This is trading. This is organic trading, uh, and it's all about process, all about education strategy. For all you guys who are trading these pivots, guys, keep on watching the workshop. It's four hours breaking down these pivots okay guys the more times you watch it over and over again the better you will you will understand them and the slower the market will get for you to see these moving parts moving up live guys god bless i love you all and i'll see you all this week take care guys Peace.